Well, hello everybody, and uh, we're we're coming in like one minute early, uh, so we're we're gonna make you wait in silence. We we'll just stare at each other. Is that what we're gonna silence, do? Silence, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, hey, uh, welcome to DDD Live for March 2020. Uh, we are helping you. Uh, stay within your uh, social distancing parameters. Uh, we hope you're, uh, everybody's healthy out there and everybody's taking care of themselves. But uh, we're glad that you took the time to tune in. And we're, we've got a special guest this this month. Uh, we're talking to Dave Chesson. You'll know him from uh, Kindlepreneur, uh, self-publishing, what is it, Publishing Rocket. Uh, I'm going to screw up all the names of everything you do, Dave. Why don't <laughs> you talk? Tell everybody what you're into. Sure. I uh, run Kindlepreneur.com, a website devoted to teaching advanced book marketing. I also am the owner and creator of Publisher Rocket, a software that helps authors to understand what's going on in the book market, as well as make better decisions on their keywords, categories, and their Amazon ads. See, that was so much better than what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's man. funny is if you ask my wife, she'd be like, eh, you do something. Huh. He does <laughs> things with pixels. <laughs> yeah. Stuff on. It's like, I don't know. Every time you come up for dinner, all I hear is blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> because people always ask something that's related to it, what it used to be called, people may recognize KDP Rocket. Yep, and, that's uh, you, right. Was that with, within the last year, you changed it to Publisher Rocket, correct? Yeah. yeah. So originally when I created it, it was just eBooks. So it only focused on the Kindle uh, aspect of books. The right. But we came out with version two a year ago, and it includes book data. And very soon, we're going to be including Audible data as well. So you'll be able to what? get all three. Yeah. it's um We've been working with publishing companies and pulling in their data and studying for almost a year now. And uh, so really jazzed about that. The other thing, too, is, is that we're in talks with Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and iTunes um, to include their data. It's taking a lot longer than I'd like. But, you know, I mean, when you work with those organizations, <laughs> um, yeah, it takes you know, a bit. something about that. <laughs> right. Exa yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it was really hard for us to initiate the conversations when our name was KDP Rocket. So we had to be a bit more, you know, intelligent and a little bit of. You know, nice. switch through for the yeah, negotiations. Forward thinking, we like it. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's fantastic. Uh, uh, I was wondering if you were making that move when you changed the name, um, because it becomes a lot more uh, broad in scope. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, like I said, they, they liked it much better. Uh, so we're like, okay, that works. <laughs> now, we, uh, you, this week, uh, not only are you on this show with us, but you, we did a uh, blog post from you, um, which I'll, let me go ahead. And I'm going to uh, sh go ahead and share the link now. We can share it again later. Uh, here we go. That's it. That's a lot to type in. But if you go to, what I should have done was just say, go to draftdigital.com slash blog. And currently it's the top entry on the uh, page, but so five self-publishing tools that will boost your author career. Uh, and excellently done, Dave. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that contribution. Yeah, you bet. I, I've, you know, I'm a huge proponent of being able to increase our effectiveness and efficiency as authors, because the truth of the matter is, is that you can really sit down and work with one thing. And, and you know, like, let's face it, there are a lot of famous authors that still use like, you know, 1990 computers um, and, and things like that or they have their practice. Um, but each day I find that there's something that helps me to be able to write more, write better. And at the same time, helps me to uh, market my book so that I can spend more time with writing. That's the key, man. Uh, more time with writing is what it's all about. Uh, and yeah, it, what, what I like uh, now, the tools that you picked are things that I, you know, I recommend a lot. Um, I know Mark recommends a lot. What was your criteria for uh, filtering tools put on there? Because that could have easily been the top 1,000 tools that I've used for self-publishing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, usually, like, it's funny is that, especially in Kindlepreneur, I get asked all the time, hey, would you like to try this thing? Or, hey, I heard about this thing. You know, what is your take on it? I can't try them all. But one of the things that really helps me to figure out which ones I do want to try is I like to know whether or not the people behind it are self-publishers or publishers or in the book world. That That's a, that's a major indicator to me. Uh, yeah. I love it when I see people who truly are, you know, making their own book as a, as a creator myself, I love the fact that I have a team of programmers and then I'm writing. Cause I'm always running into these things where I'm like, Oh man, you know, it would be great if I'm like, Oh yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah. Um, and so I really like that forward thought. The second thing is I like to see that they've been around for a while and that they show continuous growth. You know, when you invest in a program and you invest in, in this is my writing tool or this is my, whatever it is, 
if I see that they are constantly improving and adding, that's always a good sign that this isn't something where they create it and they walk off. I mean, you know, back in the day when you guys were first started, uh, that was a huge thing when when I jumped on draft to digital was I saw that you guys were always like making it better. You found yeah. it was working. I'm not going to say the name of a company, but this company was doing something, but they had so <laughs> many things they were not doing. And they were like, hey, we're going to do that. And then immediately you're like, oh, hey, we saw this problem. We fixed that. Hey, you know what? That would be cool. And that's that's what I love to see in companies yeah. uh, with authors. We get into our system. And we have our way of doing things. So if you're going to invest in something, I want it to be something that is always there and it's always going to make it better. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why we bring we bring you on, Dave, because um, you'll pimp us so that we don't have to. <laughs> um, so we, we've got a growing uh, pile of questions going here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get to some of the first ones. Uh, but I had to, I had to post, I have to push this up. This was actually the first comment from Tom Ray. Uh, he says, hello, DDD team and fellow writers. Welcome to the wonderful world of introverts teaching the world how to survive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, we got lots of hellos. Um, scroll over here to some, uh, as you're looking through the questions, yeah, uh, I'm just going to ask Dave a question because, uh, Dave, you're still writing, right? You're still actually oh, yeah. writing. How yep. uh, how have you balanced that? Because a lot of writers are trying to balance writing with what they're doing, uh, and obviously, uh, Kindlepreneur takes a lot of your time. How do you prioritize writing within? I mean, because you are the guy, right? You're the guy we always turn to for analytics and stuff. Well, thank you. That that's really cool to hear. Um, I kind of do what I've always done, which is I have my block of time in the morning that is devoted 100% to writing. It doesn't matter. Uh, I. I also kind of punish myself if I don't get up early enough for it. Uh, I have this rule that if I don't get up by 4.30 in the morning, uh, I don't get coffee for the day. So, Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, wow. it's, a bit, it's a bit masochistic, or so I've been told. <laughs> and <insane>. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I, me. I don't know. It just helps me to get up in the morning because I know it's like, I want that coffee. And so <laughs> I, I'm going to have that beautiful morning where I get up and I have my coffee and I feel great and I write. Uh, and the, the key is, is that I'll turn off all internet or not. Well, I'll turn off things like I have the the Facebook feed blocker. I will make sure everything's no email, no nothing. So nobody can distract me. I sit down, I get my writing done. And then by 730, I go up and I usually go drink my green smoothie. And I then begin the rest of the day. Um, when wow. I was working full time for the military, it was very important that I did writing in the morning and then studies at night. And by studies is learning something new, you know, making that my time to learn how to write a better book description or making that time to learn about WordPress, you know, when I was creating a website and stuff like that. Um, but that way nothing ever takes over and I'm not, not writing or I'm not, not learning. So got a lot of double thank, negatives. Thank you. appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, here we'll pop up the first question. Uh, so this one's coming from YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Uh, not the individual, but the entire platform. So, uh, Dave, what, with the popularity of translations growing, when can we expect the Euro stores to be visible in Publisher Rocket? And then he has a follow up question for us, DDD folks. Yeah, well, uh, actually, the German uh, market, and this will, uh, we actually just created an update for Rocket today. And, um, it includes the German market inside of it. We haven't announced it yet because it's funny is that Amazon Germany has been really strange over the past couple of weeks. Uh, matter of fact, they like stopped giving book data, but they have all the ebook data. So if you have Rocket and you have the new version, which I think is called 0.43, click on that American flag, switch over to German, and you can also switch over the translation and start using it. I think it's phenomenal for Amazon ads right now because even if your book isn't translated to German, uh, just putting your English book on the German market with the lack of competition is a really good uh, thing to definitely work. Um, but again, we're waiting for Amazon to stabilize a bit and so that we can get the book data as well. And then we'll make it a big announcement. But you guys are the only ones that have heard it. So uh, yeah. high five to all you rocket owners that are listening to this because you've got some inside information. <laughs> we have two rocket, we're rocket owners. owners right here. <laughs> now, to finish up on uh, Nicky Mond's uh, question, we're right now working with uh, the UK market as well. So once the German market stabilizes, then we'll be adding the UK. Uh, the process for us is that we don't just tweak everything and then put it on there. We, we spend a lot of time working with publishing companies, creating um, a 
kind of a relationship with um, them so that we can constantly be fed the right data so that we're always improving our analysis. The one thing I do not want to do is come out with that market and have our information be misleading or wrong. Um, so we're very systematic about it. I, it's, it's better to say, I'm sorry, wait until I can finally say, I really like this data and we really think it's strong. Um, so that's really our, our goal with that. With regards to the rest of the market, we're studying them. Um, so if you're like looking for Spain or Brazil or, or, you know, Japan or whatever, the problem that we're finding with those other markets is that they're extremely, the information difference between those markets is extremely slight and we're having a hard time finding a lot of publishing companies to work with us. So we're getting there, but it may take a while. But I feel very strong about the UK, German, and the US market. And luckily, those are the three biggest markets um, there. So that's that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, so we have a, it's a sort of question from Donna Poole uh, asking, uh, saying, same, same question as last time, DD. Can't wait to open up the paperback book option to all. How soon? I'm getting old here. Um, soon. <laughs> now we uh, we actually have a major uh, site overhaul that is about to launch uh, within the next week or so that is going to include some of the features we need in order to make DDD print uh, go live uh, for all. So, but we are also going to be opening up the beta again and starting to onboard people again. So there's a real good chance you'll just be included in the beta uh, as soon as we're able to to open it back up. Uh, and that's pretty much where we stand on uh, that thing. Um, but, oh, I need to go back. I want to loop back real quick because uh, there was a question about how non-English titles were doing. Uh, so we got a response from Dan Wood who, who's filling me in on that. He says, for years, non-English was less than 30%. Now it's 40%, so it's growing. And he also says German has typically been our second biggest market, but French was last year. Vive um, la France. <laughs> hey, I'm old fave. What can I say? Yeah, man. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Aaron Oliver is wondering about tax issues and the self publisher. Are normal business deductions available to us, like cost of printing books, promotion costs, expenses for travel to signings, etc.? We need to bring um, in a tax expert, don't we? We probably should. And I've got some people <laughs> in mind. We'll, uh, yeah, a whole financial and tax expert. Uh, I'm open to. I can, like, go I ahead, can speak Dave. a little bit about that. Um, because. Yeah. I, I actually own three different businesses uh, of which I've established for um, under limited liability corporations as a S corp. Um, so all three of them are that way. We're extremely adamant about making sure that we have them very separate. Uh, that's the biggest thing is that if you do create a corporation or a LLC or, or, you know, you, you turn your self publishing into a business, it's not just creating the LLC. It's also all the things you do, you know, to make sure that the the money does not cross the streams, right? Uh, I always think of like Ghostbusters when they're like, don't cross the streams. Well, uh, each one has their own bank account. And when you do that, yes, uh, I do use the business to pay for my travel. So when it's Kindle printer related, I am using the business's credit card, not my personal and then having the business reimburse me, but my business credit card. Um, and then I am that money is is like there's a tax benefit to that that the business is paying for it so it's not coming to me and then personal tax right um but it the key is is making sure that you're you're collecting your receipts that you're submitting them um that you have record of them i think that's a big part now is there some like giant tax benefit or something like oh man you know this person uh who created the llc is going to get this like thing that the government's talking about in most cases not but again it really comes down to how you operate um but i think the biggest thing is having the business pay for a lot of your travel in this case if you're doing book sales or book marketing or what have you um and then that not being taxed as a personal yeah i know that uh now this is by the way we should preface this by saying all anything tax related first of all none of us are tax experts yep should have started uh, with that. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't follow our advice by, by default. Uh, go check with an actual tax uh, expert. Um, and one, also, one thing I will... In, in the US or Canada though. or the UK or Australia or Germany or France, yeah, wherever you are. Hey, this, <laughs> what we're mostly talking about is US taxes. So you're yep. going to want to check in your region. And Dave, you, you had something you were going to add. I'm sorry. I was going to say, um, I did a podcast interview with my tax lawyer 
asking them all those questions and to explain it. And so there he starts with the whole, you can't hold me at this, but I am a tax lawyer. So here is the information. So be sure to check that out. If you have real tax questions, um, it was a plethora of, of information for me as well. And it was great because I got to like ask him the questions without him charging me because <laughs> he was on the podcast. So it's yeah, that's, why, that's the biggest reason to have a podcast is to, yeah. get, right? to get insider information <laughs> like that. Uh, this one's a DDD only uh, question. Uh, so Randy Scott asks, I've tried to order my books to, to, to the library through both Hoopla and Overdrive, but they don't show up. DDD shows they're published on both these platforms. Uh, Randy, uh, you might want to reach out to our support folks directly. Um, you can you can email support at drafttodigital.com and let them know if you're having an issue there. Uh, but I, I think what he may be wondering is he's not seen it on the, on the library's website. That may be because the library has to curate, right? There's two ways mm -hmm. the libraries get them, right? The library yeah. curates them. So they order from overdrive, then yeah. put them in the catalog. That may be why you're not seeing them. So you may need to contact your local library. I mean, yeah. our support team can help if it's a technical glitch, but if it's the fact that the library hasn't yet acquired them, that could be why. That's that's a very good point. So you might want to actually contact the library itself first. And if they say, uh, what book, what are you talking about? Uh, then reach out to our support. <laughs> um, so uh, next question. Uh, oh gosh. How do you feel that this uh, horrible coronavirus will affect indie writers? I have lots of opinions about this. <laughs> Who wants to hop up first? Uh, I, I actually got a project done that has been on the back burner for ages because two recent trips were canceled. So for me as a writer, I I got more time on my calendar to get those writing projects done. So yeah. for, so I understand it is it is not a good thing. There's there's people that are dying. Um, self isolation is teaching me, you know, a di different ways of, of of dealing with day to day activities. It doesn't really change when you work from home. It doesn't really change that much. Um, but yeah. I've been trying. I, I try to be an optimist, and I try to look at what I've been able to do, and I've been able to focus more. And Dave, I'm jealous. You get up at four thirty. I don't get up till five thirty. I feel like a complete deadbeat. But yeah. that's yeah. that's when I get my uh, my extra writing time done in the morning. How about you guys? How's uh, from our Dave Data analysis, we're seeing that there's an uptick in sales um, on books on Amazon. Uh, really? So, yep. And I think a lot of it's coming down to the fact that, and I'm projecting that that's going only going to increase as we start to fall into this new norm. Um, but there's a lot more people who are choosing to be uh, socially isolated. Netflix is probably getting high amounts of streams, and so are books. Um, yeah. People, you know, my wife is finally reading the one of the 50 different books that she's bought that she never read. Um, <laughs> I've been crushing out some audiobooks like crazy uh, because, you know, why not? My projection is, is that as people, as we kind of fall into this acceptance of being home more and not traveling as much and not going places, that books are just going to be picked up even more so. Amazon is is still supplying them physical books and eBooks. Interesting enough, you know, there was a bit of scare where Amazon said that it's only going to be um, essential items and medical items that they were going to be stocking. Um, it's not that they're not going to be shipping out the other uh, stuff. What it is, is that they're making sure that their warehouses have the extra stuff first. Um, but interesting enough, in the fine print, they talk about books being a part of that as well. Yeah, books are essential for right. For well, and I, I I thought that was great, and I think the way that Amazon's looking at it is is that we can't figure out which books are going to be essential, but there's a lot of information that is essential to people, so that's why they've included it in that list. So Amazon's still going to supply physical books, um, and more importantly, people are going to be looking for information. They're going to be looking for something to take care of their time. So I see book sales actually increasing during this time period. Now I'm still working on my uh, new novel, Love in the Time of COVID ID uh, 19. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and that's guaranteed bestseller. We got a question for you, Dave, uh, specifically okay. for you this time. Are there specific genres that seem better in the UK and German markets? Uh, mm, you know, the thing is, is that from what I can tell, so we've actually, we've got all of the German categories listed in Rocket now as well. So they're there. Uh, we're collecting the historical data. Um, sometime soon, we're actually going to be publishing a new update that will show all historical data for every category on Amazon. Uh, so you can look at sales trends and everything. And from what I've seen initially, just from the German, I, I haven't been analyzing the UK as hard because we're gathering the initial data. 
but from the German, I'm seeing kind of the same stuff I see in the US. I'm not seeing a disparity, you know, romance is still big. Um, I, the same things that I see in the US. So I can't give you some really awesome nugget there, only that the general rule of thumb is to kind of treat it the same as you see it in the US as well. Yeah. I think that's good advice. Also, if you're looking to hit big in Germany, uh, write about David Hasselhoff and you will, you will, uh, float your way to success. Um, so this is probably a DDD only question. What, uh, what platform do you recommend for creating a children's picture ebook? Are you guys working on creating a tool for this soon? Um, we, you know, picture books, children's books, that's uh, that's a difficult thing to uh, to get set up on an on a e-reader. So we don't really have a lot of options for that. Mark, you probably know a few inside tips on this. Yeah, I know. I mean, when I worked at Kobo, Kobo set up a completely dedicated uh, parent and children uh, website. And after a year and a half of putting a lot of energy and marketing and, and promotions into it, they shut it down. What does that tell you if a business decides that they're not going to do it? And I can tell you as a, as a guy who worked at Kobo and I had access to every sexy Kobo device in the universe with yeah. my little guy, Alexander, who is now not so little, he's 15 and taller than me, but even though he had access to any book he wanted in the store yeah. from, from Kobo with kids books and, and devices to easily read them, he yeah. still gravitated to print books and that even now, uh, he does everything else online. He does the video games and YouTube and all the other stuff is digital and he still gravitates to print books. Yeah. So that's something yeah, that uh, yeah. people discovered. Uh, there's There was a, a tiny bit of research on this as well that uh, kids really still prefer the print books, uh, something they can hold in their hand, something tangible. Uh, and, but if you are looking to do a digital version, um, I know that Apple has... Yeah. Uh, some tools that can help you do that. Um, it's just, it's difficult to, it, it's a difficult thing to manage, but uh, there are tools out there. I would just kind of look around. And I would, and I would recommend you focus more of your time and energy on the print books for kids. And that's using a, 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 a Ingram spark, for example, to, to get that out into the market in the broadest way possible. Um, and then, and then obviously there's different, I think you can go to Readsy potentially to find, people who can help you with, um, you know, if you, if you need help with design and, and, and some of the more technical aspects of getting it ready. Does that, that makes okay. sense, right? I don't think we're gonna, we're probably, we have so many things we wanna release. We're probably not gonna invest a lot of our development time into uh, digital versions of picture books for kids because there's not as many, um, there's, the, the market isn't as big for that. So, uh, Dave, I forgot to, I meant to show you this really early on, but I have a special shirt on. Hey, <laughs> I love it. Nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So moving on. Um, this one's, this one's a tricky question. Uh, so we can all three throw in on this with some ideas, uh, but I'm just going to warn you, we're not going to be able to just answer this thoroughly in, uh, in the limited time we have, but. Uh, I am not able to sell any of my books in DD. What do you suggest uh, so that I can see some of my books read by the readers? Um, and this is really just going to come down to being some marketing tips, honestly. So uh, who who would love to jump in first? Or oh, I put you on the spot. Go ahead, Dave. You're you're the, you're kind of an expert here, I think. So well, um, I did some... a podcast interview where I had somebody who was extremely su successful in selling outside of Amazon. And then somebody and somebody else who was extremely successful because of KU. And what we did was we analyzed why was the one person successful or the other? And why was the other one more successful than the other and so forth? And what we found was that the person who was selling outside of Amazon the most, they were successful because they were doing marketing efforts to those other markets. Okay. They were actually pushing to get reviews on their Barnes and Noble listing. They were getting reviews on their iTunes. What's really interesting, I think, is, is that one review in Barnes and Noble is, I would almost say, the equivalence of 10 reviews on Amazon, just because there aren't that many reviews. If you get five reviews on your book on Barnes and Noble, that carries way more than all your competitors who don't have any. And so this author had said, you know, I not only focused on reviews, I focused on making my book description look good for it. I focused on um, doing Facebook ads to people who like the nook and my genre. I focused on, and when, when she did this, 
she was able to see her books really carry. Now she was still seeing it was, I think she said 40% of her income was coming from markets outside of Amazon, which is significantly higher than most people see. But again, she was like, because nobody else is thinking to market their books like they are on Amazon, but to the other things. So I would say that if you're selling outside of Amazon, actually treat those other markets like you are Amazon. Try to drive some reviews, try to get some people, you know, try to do some marketing tacti tactics pointing to it, uh, just okay. putting them there and then not seeing the sales, um, you know, without any effort. I mean, it's kind of the same as Amazon, right? If you just throw your book up there and you don't do anything about it. Right. It's always going to come down to marketing. So. Uh, there are a lot of tools out there uh, and, uh, you know, it's just going to depend on uh, your resources, budget and that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of people like to use things like Facebook ads uh, to drive. Uh, I don't, I've had very little success with driving direct sales with Facebook ads and more success in list building with those. Uh, but there are tools out there like uh, Book Funnel is a uh, Book Funnel. BookBub is a popular way to market your books. Bargain Booksy, Free Booksy. Um, these are sites that are set up for uh, reaching out to readers in their database. Uh, they do have some overhead. You're going to have to pay a fee, sometimes pretty pretty high, depending on the uh, genre and the number of people on their list, et cetera. But uh, you might want to look into some of those options and just see if something fits. But uh, one recommend recommendation I have is to go off, uh, go out on like Facebook and join some groups and start to uh, collaborating with others and asking questions and seeing what other authors are doing to promote their books, especially those who write in the same genre, similar, uh, similar novels, and then just start, start kind of implementing some of the things you learn. Uh, that's the shortcut because otherwise there's a ton we could probably go into in specific detail, uh, but we'd eat up, you know, the rest of this hour and uh, maybe the next four or five hours uh, trying to cover everything. So, uh, but one, one uh, solid tip, uh, and one I can't recommend highly enough is to go visit uh, this website right here, draftgoogle.com <laughs> slash blog. Uh, and uh, we got lots of tips there. And also uh, this little guy, Kindlepreneur, oh man, Kindlepreneur.com. Dude, change your domain name. Uh, <laughs> go check out those two sites. Uh, you're bound to find something useful to help you market your books. Okay. Um, scrolling on down see one of the things i don't like about the service we use by the way guys this is my little side rant uh is that if i click away i gotta go hunt down the last question i was trying to put up so uh so dream yard guys uh take note um let's see uh here's one uh this one's not specific to uh so but maybe we can offer some because we did say ask us anything uh hey from christchurch new zealand hey that's a long ways off interested in more information on how to best set up an author presence on Facebook when using a nom de plume. Uh, there are rules and it seems formidable. So um, I am not the world's foremost expert on uh, th all things Facebook, but I mean, I, I, I do have my profiles and pages and groups, uh, but I, I really don't leverage it much. So maybe you guys might have some better advice. Than well, I, I could do. start and then uh, Dave, I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll top it off with a beautiful cherry on top. Uh, one of the things to think about when you're thinking about social media presence, whether it's Facebook or any other, is, is think about who your target readers are and why they would want to pay attention to the page, whether it's an author presence, whether it's now I, I do, for example, I do a lot of uh, traditionally published paranormal true ghost story books. And, and a lot of them are based on specific cities. So Spooky Sudbury, Macabre Montreal, Creepy Capital, which is Ottawa, Canada's capital city and uh, Haunted Hamilton. And on those sites, 80 to 90% of the things I share are cool things about the city and people's love for their home city. And that gets me way more traction than any sort of marketing or sales stuff. I get a lot more uh, people interested in our Haunted Hospital site because I'm sharing interesting articles and interesting videos and interesting things related to that topic, not to the book. So uh, one of the things I would advise if you're looking at author presence is think about your audience and think about what it is that you're putting on that platform that you're sharing with them that is interesting, intriguing, that you can engage with them, that they want to share with other people. That's probably a good way to go. And uh, I know if, if you're creating a, a fan page for your author profile or for a particular book, 
you're focusing on that content that drives the people interested in that topic rather than worrying about trying to sell your book. Yeah, the only thing I would add is um, I got to admit the using a nom de plume and creating a Facebook page for it and trying to build a following for it is really hard. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's hard on so many levels. First off is separating yourself and making sure that, you know, you're putting yourself in that author nom de plume shoes uh, and then creating a following where they're going to want to read your content that that can be a huge task. Now, where I've seen it really work is when authors who have a following already then have the Facebook page and they're doing live sessions, you know, that they're interacting. Um, people feel closer to someone when they see them. Um, Brandon Sanderson, uh, you know, who I think is one of the best fantasy authors ever uh, of our time. I love that guy. Um, he uh, has been doing these, these, sessions on Facebook and they're so cool. Um, and I'm more in love with his writing just because I get to hear him as he's either opening stuff up or signing. He usually is signing autographs on books, you know, as he's talking incredible, he's getting work done and he's interacting with me. Like that's <laughs> great. But to be able to convince new people to follow, especially with a gnome de plume at where you can't really, I mean, you probably did a pen name for the sole purpose of, keeping some separation between who you are and who your writing is. It's really hard to be personal when you can't be personal. So I, I'm, I'm not too much of a fan of investing too much time into trying to build a Facebook following with a pen name. Um, it just really becomes hard to do right when you have to kind of separate yourself from it. Yes, I agree. <laughs> that's, a, that's the way I say uh, when I was doing something else and someone finished talking and I had to pop right back in. Um, you so just agreed, Kevin, that, that you need to shave your beard. I, you know, just suggest it, it would not be the first time that I've been bitten in the butt by uh, popping in and saying, yes, exactly. I agree. Uh, now, this is from uh, one of our team. Uh, Alexis says, says uh, DDD actually has a self-marketing guide that you that can be asked for upon request. If you email uh, into support, that's support at drafttodigital.com. Tons of useful info from the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Alexis. Uh, Who's this Kevin guy you speak of? I've never heard uh, of him. <laughs> so, yes, uh, we do have that. And uh, we have some like author marketing one-on-one -on -one stuff on the blog. So uh, pop in and uh, email support and they'll be happy to, to send you that way. So we have a question. Do I need to get my book into Amazon myself? Or does D D do it? How do I go about that? Uh, so the answer is we will. We can send you to Amazon. Yes, uh, yes, we can. And all you got to do is pop over to draftdigital.com and set up your account, and you would get your book rolling there. And when you get to the point where you can choose your storefronts, Amazon is one of the storefronts that you can choose, along with Barnes and Noble, Apple Books, Kobo. Um, several others and, and subscription services, libraries. We got all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to be, I'm just going to be frank and honest with you. And, I, and heck, they may just boot me out of DD for this. No, um, I'll back you up on this. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I, if I were you, I would go to Amazon directly and come to us for everyone else. Um, and the reason is, what I do. yeah, uh, that's what, what I do. I do. It's what uh, I do too. So, uh, because we added Amazon, and we, and, I, and I'm sorry, Chris, uh, our CEO, uh, for this, but I mean, we added Amazon primarily because so many people asked for it, and because there are there are those who just want to have everything in a nice, convenient place, and we are the best nice, convenient place there is out there. Um, so we added it because people wanted it and they were asking for it. But honestly, you can earn a little more. Uh, there are a few more advantages to being direct to Amazon, and uh, it's just. Overall, probably the best strategy, just go to them direct. And then you can use us for everyone else. Uh, in fact, with some retailers, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, for example, we can often get you a better deal going to Barnes & Noble through us than you would going direct. So, uh, But all that said, anybody have anything you want to add to that? Well, I want to say uh, one of the Before things I'm fired often... and no longer allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I often use uh, Kindle Printer for or, or Publisher Rocket for is Amazon ads, and you cannot run Amazon ads unless you're using KDP to exactly. publish directly to Amazon. And uh, could, could we at least lead into how people use Amazon 
uh, keywords, uh, the keywords available through Kindlepreneur uh, or, or Publisher Rocket, and and even for creating ads. I think I think it's really important um, to to poke Dave about that and ask specific yeah, questions because I'm sure there's people who are not familiar with just how sexy a tool this is. Sure. Well, one of the questions that we had a bit earlier at 3.20 p.m. from Charlie Marsh uh, says, Dave, can you explain how to use Rocket to find potential subgenres to write in? And I think that's a really good question. Uh, the problem is, is that I would almost have to ask Charlie a couple of questions by specifically um, what they mean about subgenres. Because when I hear subgenres, I'm thinking that you're an author in a fiction. Uh, you've decided, say, fantasy, but you're trying to figure out which sub and I would almost want to say sub sub genre of fantasy it is, right? Um, one thing I would definitely say to fiction authors is it's really not a good idea to jump from, from genre to genre. Uh, if you are a sci-fi military writer, then you write in sci-fi military, and that's really important you establish yourself because you have to be a very prolific author for me to want to jump from one to the other. We talked about Brandon Sanderson, which um, I'm just going to say with that, I he writes, I mean, he's famous for his fantasy, um, you know, he wrote the, uh, wheel of time. Well, he finished the wheel of time, uh, did a phenomenal job of it. He also wrote the, the uh, way of Kings, which is ex excellent. And then I picked up a book of his that came out. Um, I think it's called skyward. Um, I think it was the first title. I always forget the title, but I thought I was reading a fantasy and I started reading it. And all of a sudden I was like, wait a second. This is a, this is a sci-fi dystopian. This is like the last Starfighter." What just happened? And I was so <laughs> shocked about it. But I mean, I love his book so much that I bought it without even reading the, <laughs> the description, apparently. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. But, you know, he you have to be really incredible to jump those genres. Um, now, subtle changes in genres, like, for example, say you're writing in sci-fi military space marine or alien invasion, um, and then you write one that's maybe hard science. I don't think that's too much of a jump for you. Uh, to be able to do that and have your friend, your fans follow. So how exactly does Rocket play into this? Well, when you're looking at genres, and I'm I'm assuming you're you're trying to figure out if there's a sub sub genre of your uh, of your type of writing and whether or not one is more popular over another, and perhaps that should be your next book to focus on. If that is the way that, that you're looking to choose your next fiction or what you're going to try to develop a story on, um, the thing that I would say that would probably help most with that train of thought is looking at our category search. Um, we took all 14,000 categories on Amazon and put them in there. Uh, you can type in uh, like the word fantasy and it will pull every genre or every Amazon category, which in a way is a genre or a subgenre. Um, and lay them all out there. Interesting enough, you'll find a lot of fantasy categories that are not in the fantasy main category lay down. Uh, you'll find fantasy in six other main categories, which is really unique because that's where you'll find categories that no other books attach themselves to because they don't think to look beyond fantasy. Um, I think it's like literature fiction, you'll find fantasy. Uh, you'll even find fantasy under sci-fi, which is weird, but it's true. Um, and it's still very fantasy related. I don't know why they do it. But the point, though, is, is that you can discover um, what's going on in these categories and even more so different ways to describe them. Uh, I was working with uh, Katie Weiland on one of her books, and we found that there was actually a sub sub genre called Gas Lamp that was extremely popular and a perfect fit for her book. Um, and she had already written it. So we were just trying to find the categories, but that's one thing. One of the other things that's going to be coming out that I, I think I mentioned already is, is that we'll be adding all historical category data very soon. We've been collecting it for over a year. So from those 14,000 categories, you can click on one and then you'll see a graph of the sales, whether sales are increasing or decreasing inside of that category. You'll also be able to see uh, the amount of authors that are competing or actually attached to that category as well as whether it's how many new books have been added compared to last month. Uh, but all this data, I think, would give you even more uh, ability to find out what sub sub genre is peaking or picking up or, you know, if it's if it's maybe seasonal. Um, but you'll be able to easily see that and know that won't be a subscription. That'll be a free upgrade for all current publisher rocket owners. So I think that answers it from the perspective of sub genres. Now with regards to, um, keywords, which is another way I could potentially, 
um, interpret the word subgenres is that say you have written your fiction book, okay, and you're trying to find the right way to position it in front of your type of readers. So with that said, you understand um, there's for fiction specifically, I've got an article. If you just type into Google um, fiction keywords, it should show up number one, but it's a step-by-step -step process on how fiction authors should go about generating their keyword ideas. And I highly recommend it because what's really cool is Amazon itself actually recommends that article to uh, people when they're trying to come up with fiction keywords. And they even change their FAQ on how to generate keywords to follow the same five steps that I use, like one month after I published that article and they promoted it. So I, I think I think that's the best way to be able to say that, that that's the right tactic to be able to use. And having a better understanding of those words, Rocket really helps with that. I now have way more faith in him and Amazon's help text than ever before, knowing that they're, uh, <laughs> uh, that they're, they're on top of things. They're stealing from you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I accidentally revealed this a little early, but uh, we have a question. Are your DVD, are your DVD print books going to allow us to upload our own cover files? I'd like to use DVD print to provide paperbacks outside of Amazon. Uh, and the answer is absolutely. Uh, you, not only can you upload your own cover files, uh, if you only have your ebook cover file, we have a nifty tool that, that's built into this thing that will convert that to a wraparound print ready cover file for you. So uh, whether or not you have that, uh, you can come on in, bring your bring your files. They're welcome, just like you are. Um, OK, so uh, I wanted to kind of skip ahead because I, I, last time we ended up not asking a whole bunch of questions from uh, folks who'd come in later. So. Uh, of course, as soon as I said that, all right, here's one from Nate. I, I got I to gotta ask a question from Nate. So <laughs> quick question for Dave. Amazon usually goes after sites with Kindle in their name. Uh, have they sent their trademark lawyers after you regarding Kindlepreneur.com? You know, that's a really good question. They have not. Um, and it's because they're, they're using you for FAQs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, well, it is kind of hard for them to say that that's an... I guess my hope is, is that because it's per, it's spelled one word, so that might help me. But I think the other thing is that they just approve of kind of what I'm doing. If I um, started, I think there's a couple things that protect me. Number one is I technically do not sell a product called a Kindlepreneur. So it's like I've seen them go after courses that have the word Kindle in the name of the course because you're selling it. I've also seen them go after um, products that have the word Kindle in it, but because I'm not that, that's one thing. Another thing too, is I can't do Amazon associate on a uh, Kindle printer because of the word Kindle. And that is in their terms of service for Amazon associate. Um, but I also think it might be a bit hard to kind of come after me too, considering that they, uh, in quote, and I screen captured it, they said, learn from the Kindle printer himself. Uh, so it's like, okay, when Amazon <laughs> says the name and they, they're promoting it and telling wow. people <laughs> yeah. that's sort of, um, like you're going to have a hard time. Not that I would ever, ever fight. I'd be like, okay, but you'd have a hard time to kind of like argue that, um, that, oh, well, we didn't approve of that. Well, you did actually. Um, but the other screen thing I shot screenshot, <laughs> I got it. I got a screenshot. It. It's great. The other thing too, though, is I do have a backup plan. I'm not going to lie. Um, I own the the domain ebookpreneur.com. And if you type that into a search, it will 301 redirect you right to Kindlepreneur. But if push came to shove, I'd become ebookpreneur. So okay. e I'd be like, all right. <laughs> Doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way, but yeah, I can kind of like book, bookpreneur because you're doing audiobooks and all the well, it would be good, but there's actually a site already that has bookpreneur and it's it's uh, it's nuts. a massive it probably welcome to preneurpreneur.com. Uh, Dave I, Preneur. I like I, I like him. Now that I know how to spell that, I'm gonna use it everywhere. All right. So uh what's the best way to combine publisher rocket with D2D? Well, the Great same question. slash similar keywords that PR gives us from Amazon work on other stores. I've been answering this question for a long time, Dave, but I think I want to hear your official answer to this question. Well, yeah, that's um, that's a really good question. The truth of the matter is, is that we've been, like I said, we've been working with drafted or excuse me with um, uh, Barnes and Noble and iTunes and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. All I'm seeing is kind of the same information. It's the same type of things people are typing into Amazon. They're typing into Barnes and Noble. They're typing into iTunes. And the truth of the matter is, is from what we've seen is it's just proportional. Um, you know, if you're seeing, say, 10,000 people type this word into Amazon, 
we're, we're seeing it like 2000 are typing it into Barnes and Noble, you know, and we're seeing uh, 1500 are typing it into iTunes and that almost same proportion is almost carrying across most of them. The only thing that's going to be really different is that um, Barnes and Noble and iTunes have different categories. Um, like Amazon, for some reason, is all about having as many categories as possible. And Barnes and Noble actually follows the BISAX codes a lot more than Amazon. I think there's a there's just under 5000 BISAC codes. Uh, there's 14,000 Amazon categories and there's about, you know, Barnes and Noble just uses the BISAC. So definitely huge differences in categories. Um, but really, it, I would say that when you look when you're looking for keywords for Barnes and Noble, iTunes, Kobo and the rest of them, the same information you get from Amazon is very indicative of what would be a good keyword or not a good keyword in those markets. Um, yeah, that guys will more or less what I'm mean, basically I, I always tell people that where Amazon goes uh, everyone else is is more or less going to follow so you're probably okay with using your Amazon uh, keywords and, and categories uh, elsewhere if you can swing it so mm -hmm. uh, we have. A, did you want to add something, Mark? No, I was going to add something while you were looking for the next question, but you got the next question. I got the well, next I don't question. Need to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it better to upload an ebook uh, in InDesign or Word? Can this can this book be published as paperback yet? I am new. Welcome to the world, Victor. I'm sorry you got here when the virus was a, attacking us all. Um, so <laughs> that was a joke, and it fell flat. Uh, so yeah, I don't think my smile. Ultimately, it's going to come down to. Um, whether you want full control over your layout and format or not. Uh, InDesign is a uh, professional layout software. I, I wouldn't recommend going out and just buying it if all you're gonna do is uh, book layout. We can do your, your layout for you for free if you upload your Word document. Um, you can upload a Word document, an RTF file, uh, an ODT file, and uh, when it comes to the print side, you, you can upload your PDF, or if you have your ebook pre-formatted from some tool, you can upload that as well. So um, <clears throat> Vellum is a popular piece of software. It runs only on the Mac right now, but it's pretty popular and a lot cheaper than InDesign, I think. Uh, well, InDesign's got like a monthly. So, But I, it, it really is just going to depend on uh, how much control you want over the layout. So anybody else yeah, want to chip in? I would almost say that uh, if you're doing a textbook, right, and you need certain layouts, then InDesign's the only way to go. But otherwise, I think yeah. it's a like beast to learn. Um, yeah, I was going to say, just submit it to draft to digital They'll format it for you. It's like yeah. the coolest hack. My um, first book I was... I would almost say, too, is Reezy has a free formatting kind of thing that you can put in there. It's, uh, it's limited in what it can do, but it's very intuitive and easy to use as well. So if you're, like, adamant that you need to do it, um, check that one out before you check out Vellum. Vellum, I would say, it, it's a bit expensive, uh, it's a couple hundred, if not $300, I think, uh, to be able to use. Yeah. Uh, if you are making multiple books, like you're going to be in this industry, then get Vellum and, and, and enjoy it. But That's otherwise, a, good point. Yeah. a great cut is using Reezy's uh, book formatter. Yeah, yeah or if, if, if you digital one book, book try formatter. it for free. Before <laughs> if you, you have to do it yourself, one. use Reezy's. But if not, and you don't have time for that, like a lot of people... Get the draft to digital guys. Yeah, well, the DDD uh, formatter, by the way, has some free templates that you can uh, use to make the book look really nice. You can make your ebook and your print books look uniform that way. Mark, you were adding something. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to add, and you can use the templates, uh, which will be able to be used when paperback launches, uh, Victor, in just uh, very shortly, within the next month, probably, uh, the beta is going to be expanded. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be clear about that. The beta will be expanded. The, yes. <laughs> the, the DDD print itself is not launching in the next month. We just want to make that clear. Uh, so, uh, and speaking of that, uh, does DDD format to print? Where do I find that info? Stay tuned. If you have a DDD account, uh, we'll be uh, making, uh, we'll be sending out an email when we do our uh, launch of our reformat of the site. We're basically trying to make this more print friendly uh, for those who only want to do print or uh, you know, I uh, have uh, special needs on that. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to be, we're, we're, we will be getting to you. I promise. Um, so Terry, just make sure you've signed up for draft to digital and you'll, uh, and, and go into your notifications and make sure you're accepting those emails from us so that we can notify you about cool things like this live chat with Dave and, yeah. and D to D print. 
This is a committed person. I'm I'm going to get a Mac to be able to use the EPUB maker you suggested last time. What was it called again? I didn't write it down last time. And that would be Vellum, which we were talking about earlier. So uh, that's a that's a pricey commitment you've decided to make. But I, I respect you. And if you're going to be doing a lot of books, as Dave pointed out, uh, that's probably a good way to go. I see some folks had actually answered that in the comments, but... Uh, Haha, I did the talk and you don't. <laughs> and Glenda, um, you should check out Apple Books pages as well, especially if you're looking at doing cookbooks or children's books or any of those more complicated textbooks, et cetera. Um, uh, Apple Pages is actually a pretty good program as well, so you can save a few hundred dollars. You're going to spend thousands of dollars on a Mac, but you'll save a few hundred dollars on, on Vellum. And yeah. just to add in there too, um, Barbara Mueller, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, brought up an extremely good point, which is that you don't have to uh, purchase a Mac if you really want to use Vellum. Uh, you can do the Mac Cloud, um, and then it's it's like a virtual base so that you can then access um, Mac apps without having to go that route. Although yeah. I love I love Macintosh, I've got nothing but Macintosh myself. Um, maybe it's a better experience for you. If that's the thing, but uh, if if you're about to drop that much money just to be able to use the one program, go Mac Cloud. It'll save oh, you. I actually do that, Dave. I, I've used Vellum through Mac in the Cloud. Uh, you still have to purchase Vellum, but I can still, I've got another $30 in credit, so I can just- If you know someone who hour. has Vellum, why don't you throw them like 30 bucks and maybe uh, maybe be, they can be their friend. do it for you. Uh, so <laughs> we, uh, can you send Dave's five ways, a link to Dave's five ways article uh, well, you're in luck here. Uh, the the uh, actual link is super long and ugly. So if you go to draftdigital.com slash blog, currently it is the first post up there. If you're watching this in the future, um, scroll down. Search, <laughs> search for Dave Chesson on uh, on uh, draft, our draft Digital blog, and you ought to be able to find it uh, close enough. Um, so we have a question here. Uh, I have a second, 60 second video sci-fi book ad, which, which platform would you suggest I promote this? Uh, oh, sounds like they're on YouTube, right? That's where that question came they're from. They're on YouTube. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to interpret the question. Maybe you guys are, would have more luck with that. Do what platform would, they, would I promote this video? Promoting the ad or promoting the book? What do we think? What, what should we answer? I think I think it's they, they have the video and they want to use the video to promote the book. Where should they push the video out? Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to start. I'm going to say uh, let's let's pick Amazon, the world's biggest bookstore, and mm -hmm. you can create a free Author Central account. Make sure that you've loaded it to your Author Central account. Make sure you created a free Author Central account and loaded it there. So that's one thing you can do with that video. Yeah. One thing, uh, if the question is, is should I do a video ad on YouTube or a video ad on Facebook? A couple of things that somebody should keep in mind. Number one is, is that um, a pro for YouTube is competition is ridiculously small on YouTube video ads. Um, as a matter of fact, especially in the author community, you're going to find that, um, that I think Grammarly owns the YouTube advertisement at, at this point. But, um, you know, you can definitely target some like the if say it's sci-fi, which it is sci-fi, you could totally target some of the nerd, um, uh, the nerd YouTube channels, which I'm a huge fan of. I watch those things a lot. I think it would be great if I'm watching something, you know, that's uh, analyzing whether Firefly is going to come back or not, you know, and I'm watching that video and all of a sudden a, a sci-fi book pops up and it's a good looking video that would probably drive me to do it. So that is one thing. There is a lot less competition. Um, there are a lot less authors thinking about it because there's not a lot of information out there. So yeah. you could try it. Uh, the thing I do like about Facebook though, is that with Facebook, um, I really like how you can really detail and, uh, you can create ads that are specific to certain markets. So you can really get deep in the woods or deep, deep into uh, the information and target ads. The thing though, I, this is just my personal belief and I'm just going to put it out there and be a little, you know, open. I know there are certain situations that it's like, well, this worked this way, but here's my general feel on it though. I've always seen that ads that are specific to the target market I'm looking at are the best kind. And what I mean by that is like, um, maybe I'm targeting fans of, of, you know, storm, um, starship troopers that also love firefly and having an image. That's awesome. That says something like it's like firefly, uh, and starship troopers had a baby, you know, that 
that's a real connector because those two groups see that. And I know that only people that like those things are going to see this. Um, they're going to engage with it more. So having a video that doesn't kind of connect the, the specific target market that you're going for may hinder it. So just something to consider. Um, so I guess there's really a pro and a con to each. Okay. Um, here, we got a question about PR. Uh, so is there any way that I can find someone who will help me doing PR for my books? I have three of them. Um, you know, PR is, uh, there are lots of agencies out there. Uh, I always hesitate to tell people to go look at this stuff because there are a lot of predators out there as well. So um, what I would do is uh, in order to find somebody to help you with the, uh, the marketing and promotion of your work is uh, kind of what I suggested earlier. I would join some uh, author groups on Facebook and and don't don't post openly that you're looking for someone to help you market your books, but start paying attention to what people are saying and doing, and then maybe get into some private conversations with people who seem like they know what they're doing, yeah. uh, and ask them for recommendations about um, ways that you can market your work and people they they may know who can help you. Uh, there are a lot of services out there. There's some legit and some not so legit. I just hate to send you off into those shark infested waters. <laughs> um, but, you know, I always like to, the, the cling to shore method is uh, to join some of these Facebook groups. Like yeah. the, the 20 books group uh, on, um, on Facebook is probably a pretty good one for, for most people. You can learn quite a bit and make some connections as well. And Lori, uh, make sure before you spend a single penny on PR with any of those firms, especially the ones that advertise a lot are usually the sharks. They, have the millions of dollars because they've they've sucked the blood out of out of uh, hopeful writers looking for marketing and PR. When, <laughs> Google when, their name. Go check out Writer Beware by Victoria Strauss. Yes, yes. And check them out before you spend money anywhere on marketing and PR. Please do yourself a favor and spend ten minutes checking to see if these people are listed on Writer Beware or the Alliance of Independent Authors is another great place to check to see is this a legitimate company? Should yeah. I spend money with them? Yeah, one other uh, thing I would add to that, if you are looking for a PR uh, company, if they say we will do X, Y, and Z, then you understand that you're paying for that package and they will do X, Y, and Z. That is one thing, okay? So like, say for example, they do, we will make a press release that will go out to these websites. Okay, if those websites are cool, then that's a good, you understand the price, you're getting that. Now, here's where we get into where I call the sketchy is where the person says, we'll market your book and we're gonna make it a bestseller, okay? Um, my number one criteria of a go, no go, okay, if, if I were to say, is that do they require to read your book first before they take you on as a client, all right? If they're saying, like, let's imagine that you have a really a really bad book, you, you know, it, it's poorly written, uh, you didn't use an editor, and yet this company's still saying that we're gonna, you know, that we'll market your book, Real great marketers will not work on a book unless they either A, specialize in that area, or B, uh, they've read your book and they think it's it's worthy uh, of their marketing efforts or that it, it will succeed and be a good product. So exactly. think about that if you're looking for a marketer. Okay. Great point. Dan. So uh, we are, uh, we're closing in on the, we're on the three minute mark. Uh, so we're going to take a few minutes and talk about some uh, some sort of housekeeping stuff. First of all, uh, make sure you are going over. I'm going to put uh, this back up for a second. Go make sure you're going to uh, kindlepreneur.com sort of support our good friend, Dave, uh, and thank him for being uh, a source of wisdom on the show. And uh, we want to make sure that we, uh, tell you about the you probably already know about this but we offer uh, we're offering free 30 minute author consultations not with Dave necessarily uh, unless he just wants to chip in but uh, you can tell us to, uh, to come join me with one of someone like consultations. <laughs> you can uh, you can go and sign up for a chance to talk to me uh, mark here or our good friend and co-worker Dan wood uh, to just and sort of continue this little party of asking us anything, get some advice, inside tips, whatever we can help you with. It's 30 minute consult. We offer them free after practically every one of these. Uh, their slots are limited and I'm, I'm gonna shut you down within 24 hours uh, of uh, this broadcast. So if you wanna go uh, get a slot, go reserve one now. My We're calendar has already exploded. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, every time we do one of these, I start seeing people. People know that I'm going to have to switch up the URL at some point, and uh, 
and change that out. Um, so uh, yeah, go pop in for that. And uh, in addition, make sure you're subscribing to us on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, YouTube, especially right now, if you're not, if you're watching us on YouTube and you're not already subscribed, uh, subscribe because we got to get that. So we're we're still building up, right? So we got to get to that thousand mark so that we can start using some of the, uh, the interesting tools that are there. So you'd be helping us out a great deal. And uh, make sure you're sharing this with uh, all your friends and buddies out there. Uh, some writer out there is counting on you to tell them how to get started. So, uh, And make sure you bookmark d2dlive.com. That's the brand new uh, URL we have for uh, pointing you to this stuff uh, each month. You'll get a countdown and everything. You can see past webinars from there. So uh, go check that out, d2dlive.com. And finally... Um, we have, uh, we've been talking about this beta through the whole thing. So if you are interested in signing up so that when we reopen the beta, we can start onboarding you, pop over to drafttodigital.com slash print beta right now, right now, right now, right now. And uh, you, when we start onboarding everybody again soon, you will be among those. So we're at four o'clock, uh, so we're going to have to wrap this up, but Mr. Dave Chesson, thank you so much for being a part of the program today, man. We appreciate it. You bet. And thank you so much for having me. All right. Mark, I salute Dave, you, sir. Dave, stay. thank you so much. And Kevin, thank you so much. All right. And everybody else out there, stay stay socially segmented, stay healthy, and, uh, and keep writing. And we'll see you all on the best sellers list. See you next time. Bye-bye.